Boy oh boy have I been waiting to do this video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this much anticipated smock alien kit. Oh yeah, been a favorite on this chucker for about three weeks now and all i got to say is winner winner pro central. There are some cons which we're going to get into in the close ups but there's way more pros than there are cons. If you're the type of vapor you're looking for a kick ass high wattage mod with a kick ass sub on tank for a good price point, this is probably in your wheelhouse. Favor for days, flavor for days, and she's a hidden like a truck full of dildos. Alright, so here's the packaging for this smock alien kit. And inside you receive this authenticity slash warranty card. You receive an alien mod, a USB charging cable for charging and upgradable firmware, extra O-rings and a top seal for your tank, two vape bands. This kit also comes with a baby beast. That's right, the baby beast tank with a pre-installed 0.4 ohm coil head, an extra 0.15 ohm octuple coil head, also an extra glass tube. And I'm just letting you guys know right now, I'm not going to cover the baby beast in this review just because I've already got a full review on it. If you want to see the full review on the baby beast, I'll post the link down in the description check it out. This kit also comes with a smock battery warning card. And last but not least, it comes with a smock alien kit user manual. So check it out. These are the alien kits that smock sent me. Now you got six different color options. Five of them are black units with different color trim. So I got the black and the red with the red O-rings. I got the black and the gunmetal with the black O-rings and the black and the gold with gold O-rings. And you can also choose black with blue trim or black with orange trim and an all silver version. But what I really like about the black units is that the O-rings match the trim. That's pretty freaking cool. I think that's a classy touch. Personally, so far, I prefer the black with the gold trim. I think it looks sick as tits. On to just the alien mod. Now, a few specs for you. She's 85 millimeter by 44 millimeter by 30 millimeter. So here's the front of the mod. Right here, you get your big old mini screen, which I'm going to show you in a second. Waters down, waters up buttons, USB port for charging and upgradable firmware, ventilation holes, side firing switch. A better look at the side firing switch right here all the way around. Nice, nice little clicky, clicky side firing switch. On the back, you got more ventilation holes, a carbon S fiber little back panel. It says Smog Alien 220TC. Got the trim that runs all the way around the mod. At the top, you got your 510 connection, stainless steel threads, spring-loaded 510 pin. So check it out. Here's the base of this device, and this is where the battery door is. Like I mentioned before, this thing takes two 18650s, and when there's no 18650s in there, this sucker is loose. The door's wobbly. When you pop it in there, it's loosey-goosey, loosey-goosey. But when you have the batteries in there, it becomes tight. It snugs a bug. This door's not moving anywhere. I'm going to show you in a second. But what I love about this is when you pop it open, you got a gauge. It says positive. It says negative. I really like that. It's one of the only mods that I've seen have that. Maybe there's a few out there, but most most of them have the negative on the side, the positive on the side, and you're looking around like, where the hell? Which way should I put the batteries in? Not with this one. I love that, love that, love that. And here's the inside of the battery door. You got plus and minus. So if you don't know how to read these down here, the plus and the minus, you got these to read. It's a good reference to pop your batteries in correctly. You also have A and B, A battery, B battery. On the mini screen, it's gonna have a dual battery capacity gauge, and it's gonna be reading the A battery and the B battery, and that's basically what that means. So check it out. Here's what the baby beast looks like, the tank that comes with this kit. Love the matchy matchy O-rings with the matching trim. Again, I've got a full review of this bad boy in the link. I'll post a link down in the description. Check that son of a bitch out. But yeah, 22 millimeter. Looks a tits. Sits pretty much damn near flush. I mean, maybe a little bit of a gap if you look pretty close, but you gotta be. I mean, it's hard to see even with the naked eye. It really is. And this thing looks good. 22, 23, 24 millimeter tanks. RDAs sit freaking flush on here. There's no overhang. 25 millimeter. There's a slight overhang on the end here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I got this ferro right here. and Check it out. Just a smidge. It just hangs over. Just a freaking smidge if you see that. That may be a nitpick con to some of you guys. I don't think it looks that bad. Smock, you guys should uh, bow this out just a little bit so your 25 millimeter tanks, RDAs, RTAs fit on here and there's no overhang. That would be killer. But check it out with this Petri 22 millimeter. Ho, 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 ho. The gold plating with the gold trim. It looks sick ass tits. Little size comparison for you guys. Here's the Alien Mod next to this lava box and they are about the same length. They are about the same width as you guys can see, but they are definitely not the same thickness. This sucker right here is definitely thicker than the lava box. Next comparison is this Alien Mod next to this Cooper Plus, and I tell you what, it's a lot taller, it's a lot wider, but it's definitely not thicker. And last but not least, here is the Alien Mod next to this Relo 23 in dual 18650 mode. They're about the same length. Nah, this one's a little bit taller, a little bit taller in width. But that's hard to tell because they're both shaped differently. But the way they feel, which one feels better, they both feel fantastic. But I would have to say this Alien Mod, it feels better to me. All this is going to be subjective. Like the uh, the side firing switch, I can fire like this, fire like this in my palm. With this one, you just got that fire button. I don't know, man. This one just feels freaking good. It just, it just feels good in the old hand. Both of them feel good in the old hand. But that's a size comparison for you. 
A battery first, B battery second, close her down, push down, lock her in, and she's locked into place and she's not going anywhere. Like I said, no rattle. When the battery's in, she's secure. Yep, yep, yep. First things first, five clicks of the firing switch, turns her on. And it goes straight to the menu screen. And as you guys can see, we're running it in regular wattage mode. W for wattage, N for normal preheat boost. You got the AB, that's that dual battery capacity gauge. You also have volts, ohms, amps, mode. You got the board temperature, you got the puff counter, and at the bottom, you got the second counter. And since I have nothing on this device and I go to hit the fire button, what's gonna happen? It's gonna say no coil. So I pop the baby beast back on there. Matchy, matchy baby beast, gold O-rings. Took a hit off this 0.15 ohm octuple coil head at 60 watts, as you guys can see. The volts, 3.18. One ohms 0.165 amps 19.3 watts mode 38 degrees Celsius is what the board's reading at and then also I took a three and a half second hit so while we're at it in regular waters mode like we're at 60 watts okay you can take her all the way up to 220 watts if you want you can go in 0.1 increments or you can hold her down and she scrolls fast does not round robin scroll back down scrolls all the way down to six watts so in wattage mode, you could vapor all the way down to 0.1, all the way up to 3 ohms. And in temperature mode, you could vapor all the way down to 0.06, all the way up to 3 ohms. Five clicks of the fire panel locks this device. Five clicks unlocks it. One, two, three, four, five. She's locked. Okay, you can't adjust anything. You can't fire her up. But five clicks unlocks it. One, two, three, four, five. She's unlocked. You can fire her up. Oh, yeah, you can adjust her. In order to get into the menu settings, you hit the fire panel three times. One, two, three. When you get in there, you're going to see mode, click it, puffs, setting, power, mode, whole mode. We're going to go into temp. You can choose wattage, temp, memory. There's 22 memory settings. Go back to wattage. We're going to go back to temp. Hold that. Uh, we can adjust the wattage between 6 watts and 220. We're at 75. Hold that. We can adjust the stainless steel or two stainless steel nickel, titanium. We're going to go to stainless steel. Hold that. And then we can adjust the TCR. I like it where it is. Hold that. Boom. We're back into the menu system. And with the menu screen in temperature mode, you can see the SS right here and if it was in nickel or titanium it would say NI or TI and then down here you get the F for Fahrenheit and you can adjust the Fahrenheit to Celsius with these waters up waters down buttons okay and around robins and Celsius back into Fahrenheit that's how to adjust the temperature also in stainless steel mode or nickel mode or titanium in temperature mode the wattage mode is down here okay so it replaces the board temperature remember how in regular wattage mode the board temperature was down here now it's watts down here because we can adjust the waters like I just showed you that's another big pro so what I did was I popped that baby beast off because it just had a regular core head and we need some with stainless steel or nickel or titanium but preferably stainless steel i got a dual stainless steel building this petri rta gonna go ahead and screw her on there like I said, we got our stainless steel mode like you guys just saw. Hit the fire button. It says new coil. Yep, that's what you want to see. Yes. And we're in stainless steel mode at 470 degrees. Stainless steel, baby. Yep. Yeah, boy. I'm going to drop her a little bit. 430. There we go. That's how you know it's working. Now let's say we want to go back to wattage mode and get into there. Three clicks on two, three. Mode, hold that down. Go into memory, wattage. Hold that down. And then uh, I like to stay in strength normal, but you can choose strength hard, soft, normal. That's your pre settings. Okay, normal, hold that down. And then we're back into wattage mode. And I'm going to unscrew this. I could vape this thing in wattage mode with stainless steel, but I like my baby beast tank with that 0.15 ohm octuple cool head. Going to go ahead and screw that bad boy on there. And when I hit the fire button, it should detect that's a new coil. And it does. Hit yes. And we're back at it. So I'm going to briefly go over the other settings. Now, it's pretty much like the H-Priv, other smoke products, smock products. In order to get there, three clicks, one, two, three. Puffs, you can adjust the puffs. You can go into settings, okay? Adjust the screen time, okay? Lock it. You can go into contrast. You can adjust the ohms. If you have upgradable firmware, you can go in there. No, yes, no, we don't have any. And then the last setting is power, where you can cut this device on or off, on, off, okay? We're gonna go back on. We don't wanna cut her off yet. Or you can set most of your settings on the fly. In order to do that, for example, in wattage mode, if you wanna go ahead and set the preheat settings, we gotta hold down the fire button and the wattage up button down at the same time, and boom, we can adjust normal, hard, soft, normal, hard, soft. And we're done, hit the fire button, and boom, it takes us back to the menu screen, we're in soft. In waters mode, if you hold down the fire button and the waters down button down at the same time, you can adjust the watts, okay? Okay, watts, temp, memory. Oh yeah, we're gonna keep it in watts though. To lock the device real fast on the fly, all you gotta do is hold down the waters down, the waters up button down at the same time, and she locks unlocks it oh yeah now when we are in temperature mode it's a little bit different when you hold down the fire button and the watch up button down at the same time you can change the wattage click it hold it down and adjust it as you guys can see and in temperature mode it's the same thing as wattage mode if you hold down the fire button and the watch down button down at the same time you can adjust it between memory watts and temperature see 
So I found four cons for this bad boy, and they are nitpicky cons. They're really not cons to me. They may be cons to you guys. And just to let you know, these are beta testers. All the units that Smock sent me, the alien kits, are all beta testers. Now, I've heard through the grapevine that the final units, they've gotten rid of all these nitpicky cons. But that being said, if you own a final unit and you're having any of these nitpicky cons, please comment down in the comment section and let us know. So the first nitpicky con is when you touch the fire panel, just touching it, there's a little bit of feedback. And it's mostly at the bottom and on the side. And it's just touching it. And you'd think that when you shook it, there'd be rattle. But no. No rattle. And when you press it, it's nice, clicky, and comfortable. Here's the red one. I think this is just a little bit louder than the gold. Again, when you shake it, no rattle. The gunmetal version, it's better than both of them. Still a little feedback. And again, that feedback does not change the fact that the fire panel is really comfortable and it's clicky. I mean, it's really, really nice. It's just when you touch it, it's just feedback, feedback. Second nitpicky con, none of my beta testers came with a protective film on the menu screen. And because of that, there are scuff marks. Look at that. Scuff marks on the gold one and the red one. The gunmetal is the best by far. Hardly any scuff marks on the gunmetal one, but the red one and the gold one's pretty bad. Next nitpicky con, when you pop a 25mm device on there, there's going to be just a touch overhang on the front. I mean, barely, but it's there. And last but not least, out of the hundreds of times that I fired each unit, I've had about three or four misfires. I mean, it fires most of the time, but the three or four that it's misfired, I definitely got to let you guys know. But you know what? The pros definitely outweigh the cons for this bad boy. She's stylish, looks the tits, color options galore, matchy-matchy O-rings galore. It's just, this is a freaking good piece. It's a good kit. It's ergonomic. Feels good in the old hand. Light, light, light for a Doi Teen 650 mod, in my opinion. The fire panel, comfy, clicky. It feels good. Oh, man, does it feel good. People are going to flock to this. They're going to flock to it because of the way it looks. They're going to flock to it because of the way it performs. It performs really, really well in TC mode. It performs fantastic in wattage mode. You receive a baby beast tank. You receive an extra tube, a glass tube. So if you're to lose this tank, you got that one to go to. You receive two coil heads. Everything you need. You got everything you need for a high wattage device kit. As you guys can see, the menu screens are big, bright, beautiful. And as you guys saw, it's easy. It's, in my opinion, easy to navigate it. For a newbie, no. But for someone who's been in the game and vaping with sub ohm tanks and regulated mods, it'll be easy to navigate. And I love how crisp the screen is. I think this is the most beautiful screen that I've seen on a mod to date. It's got a USB port on the front and not on the base and they market this sucker as upgradable firmware I've yet to test that out but I'm going to and do a follow up if it does that's another big pro the waters down waters up buttons are nice clicky and comfortable like you guys saw before, the battery door is easy to use. It is a little wobbly without the batteries in there, but once you pop the batteries in there, it's snug as a bug, not going anywhere. But also, I love this. You got the gauges like I showed you, the plus and the minus. It's so easy to see and use, in my opinion. You just pop it in there. You know which way it's going in. Okay, negative, positive. You push down. You push it in. Like I said, not going anywhere. Snug as a bug. And last but not least, price point. I've seen this sell online. Average about 58, 60 bucks. And for what you get, it is super competitive. Like I said, I think people, they're going to flock to this thing. Now on to the big question the big answer today hey rip if you lost this sucker today would you go out tomorrow and buy one and the answer is absolutely freaking lully look at these things man this thing looks the tits it's just freaking sleek it's got different color options it vapes great it feels good in the old hand all the pros i mentioned absolutely this is rip trippers and remember smoking is dead vaping is the future and the future is now